Hey guys, Mike with Radical Reptile Fun. Another live video this weekend. Um, and we realized we haven't featured that many snakes, so it's definitely time to feature some snakes. And uh, so we'll build up a little bit of an audience here. You guys can definitely ask questions. Uh, we're gonna see uh, three types of snakes today. Um, we're, one I have right in my hand, but we're also gonna see our biggest snake that we own. Our biggest snake that we own is Popol, our 14 foot Burmese python. We'll hop her out here last. So you gotta stay tuned, uh, tuned through the entire video. Uh, but who I have here, this is our Australian water python. Uh, his name is Poseidon. Hello, Poseidon. Now, Poseidon, uh, they're from Australia. They do get uh, quite big, actually. In fact, Poseidon has super grown since we got him. He's a nice thick snake, too. Um, the reason they got the name water python is, if you notice, they actually glow this iridescent color. It makes them look like there's water all over them. In fact, that's why people think snakes are slimy is because of the iridescent color to them. Uh, they look just so smooth and slick and then that iridescence really pops. Now you're probably wondering what does the word iridescent mean? That's this rainbow color that you're getting. Basically what's happening is the scales are reflecting the light and as the scales are reflecting the light it makes basically like a prism so you can actually see the different colors kind of popping off of them which is amazing. Now these do guys, uh, these things do like a little bit of humidity and they do like to uh, have water. Uh, we have two water pythons and both water pythons have a very nice water bowl that they can go in and out of. Um, out in the wild they can be found uh, around different types of uh, swampier areas. Um, now what's really cool about these snakes is in Arizona nobody has water pythons. Um, I have searched far and wide for people that own water pythons here in Arizona and as far as I'm aware I have the only two, me and Tegan do. Um, and this is one of them and they sure enough are a pair. But uh, let's get down to a little bit of disappointing news. Uh, we may not be able to breed them. Uh, there's a reason as to why. Uh, so I'm holding this snake right now and you wouldn't even think by this snake because you're not seeing anything. You're not seeing it's nice moving. It's healthy and everything. But this snake is actually NIDO positive. So that means it has the virus. Um, so it does have NIDO virus. Uh, we did test a lot of our snakes. Uh, when we found out that our black-headed python and woma python got uh, nidovirus, we tested all of our boas and pythons. In fact, somebody that helped us out was Kathy, and Kathy will be in the video here in just a little bit. Now, um, this snake is positive for nidovirus. Now, you don't see it because this snake is actually not showing clinical signs. And what's interesting is Poseidon may never show clinical signs. Uh, but yeah, yes, questions. Well, no, not questions. Uh, how about you explain what nidovirus is for yes. people that are joining that so, may not have seen our video. So for everybody who hasn't seen our video, and if you haven't seen it, go on to YouTube because it is on our YouTube channel. You can see us actually testing all the snakes. Uh, nidovirus is actually um, a type of virus that does infect snakes. Um, it is a respiratory virus. So it actually causes basically pneumonia in snakes. Um, a lot of people think that when they have a snake, they get this infection called a respiratory infection. And respiratory infections are usually bacterial. Uh, nidovirus is viral though. Um, so this snake actually has it, but we've not seen any respiratory signs. Now, how can I tell if the snake's got some sort of respiratory signs? Well, normally you'll see up by the nose, you see lots of bubbling, okay? So that's the first sign is lots and lots of bubbling up by the nose. You also might see them uh, mouth breathing. Now, if you notice with our snake here, it's got its mouth closed, but some snakes, because they have nidovirus, they struggle to actually breathe. So they actually open their mouths to breathe. Um, now, those are definitely signs of respiratory infection. Now, respiratory infections can happen in snakes uh, either because you don't have the right humidity, the right heating. Um, if the snake is too cold, it can prompt respiratory diseases. Too stressed out. Yeah, they can get stressed out and that can also cause it. Well, here's the thing is when we first uh, saw night or when we first learned about nidovirus, uh, a couple of our snakes had some respiratory infections and we weren't quite sure as to why. Uh, we adjusted everything on our husbandry level. We adjusted the humidity, the heat. 
We even cleaned, uh, power washed a lot of stuff so that way there wouldn't be any dust around just in case that might have been prompting it. Uh, we also took them off of shows uh, if they showed signs of respiratory. And what's interesting is even though we did all those steps, it wasn't going away. Um, and then, of course, two of our snakes got severe respiratory in infections and they passed away because of it. So that prompted us uh, through our vet to test for a virus that is not very well known. It's called nidovirus. And when we tested all of our snakes, uh, sure enough, this is one that tested positive for it. And the ones that passed away also tested positive for it. Um, all the snakes you're gonna meet today all tested positive for nidovirus. But we wanted to give you guys an update on them because even though they are retired from shows, as you can see, Poseidon, since he does not show clinical signs, he's doing perfectly fine. And we are actually going to be testing him probably within the next six to eight months to see if he is still positive for nidovirus. Because some snakes have been able to recover from it, but it's a very low percentage. Exactly. But he's a gorgeous snake. Mm -hmm. And as Michael was saying, for everyone that wasn't joined, these snakes are from Australia. They do get very large. He is still just a juvenile, but they actually get um, their name water python because they live in marshes and they're near water a lot. And it's actually an aboriginal story that these guys created waterways in Australia. It's a very, very cool snake. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. There we go. Hi, Poseidon. And Percy is our other water python. Um, unfortunately, she's not very nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> also, Percy tested negative for nidovirus. So Percy does not have nidovirus in her. Only Poseidon does. Yeah. And here, let's see if we can get a good sunshine shot on his scales. As you guys can see, there's that iridescent Michael was talking about earlier. You guys see the rainbow scales? So kind of like any other virus, some snakes can be carriers, other snakes will show clinical signs, some snakes may die very quickly. How does not, not, how does the virus spread? So that's a great question. It's very similar. Oh, are you getting stuck on your finger there? Yeah. So the virus actually spreads via respiratory. So they have to cough on another snake. They have to sneeze on another snake. It's by their mucus. Um, if they swallow enough of their mucus and end up going to the bathroom, if another snake say if there was a pair housed together for breeding, um, if that other snake that was negative went through the positive snake's uh, poop, they could potentially be positive at that point. So it's basically through their mucus, just like the common cold with people. Nidovirus is most commonly seen in boas and pythons. Um, there have been small traces of it in uh, very little amounts of colubrids. Um, one colubrid that's uh, been seen is a uh, corn snake. Um, however, no clinical signs were ever shown with them, um, and it was a very low percentage of the virus actually seen um, yeah. in those snakes. So, uh, as of right now, it's boas and pythons, and there's a place that actually does testing for it, and they're actually helping with studies. Uh, they're called Fish Head Labs, um, and that's the people that we did the study through um, and did all the testing through. And when we did that, uh, sure enough, that's when we. Uh, uh, we found out that how much uh, they're actually supporting the community of this um, and how little uh, animals actually have been shown to have nidovirus, but that sure enough is quickly growing. Um, we actually have an anaconda that has nidovirus in it. Yeah. And nidovirus, it was first discovered in the 1980s with ball pythons. So it's still a very new virus in the uh, pet world, basically. A lot of people don't know about it. It took our vet several years um, working with her to figure out that uh, some of ours, again, were unfortunately diagnosed with it. So it's definitely still very new. And we have tested all of our snakes and we'll continue to test them because, again, there's a small chance that they can actually recover from the virus. But, um, yeah, we have a separate NIDO room for our snakes now. Yep. And we always make sure that we're washing our hands um, in between these snakes. So uh, because I'm handling these snakes, I'm not going to be handling any of our snakes that are not tested. Even though I've washed my hands, I, I don't want to accidentally have something that might be lingering yeah. 
So uh, Luana just asked, do you have to sterilize yourself between snake contact? Yes. yes. Even with other snakes that have positive nidovirus, what we're going to be doing today is after we put Poseidon away, Michael will go and wash his hands, but then we'll actually have Kathy hold another snake for us. And then we will wash our hands again, and then they will handle Hopal. Generally, we only handle one nido positive animal, and then we will wash everything on ourselves, our clothing, uh, before we touch another snake. But um, today we're staggering them in a way and washing ourselves <laughs> in a way that it's going to be okay. Yep. And, and the virus can live on uh, other surfaces. However, uh, washing hands, uh, actually hand sanitizing and stuff, it actually kills the virus extremely easily. Yeah. Um, we also buy special chemicals that uh, they use for like uh, doctors and um, vet offices vet that offices. will target the virus. Yep, uh, that target the virus as well. Uh, so it, it really helps out in cleaning. And we also don't just use one product. Uh, Tegan's very good at uh, keeping things sanitized. Uh, and we actually use separate products. Uh, so that way, in case that product doesn't kill it, well, the secondary product will definitely kill it. Yep. Um, so it's it, it's not just about cleaning. A lot of people, when they clean cages, they'll go in, they'll probably do a quick rinse, a couple spot cleans. Uh, but even if you have healthy snakes or snakes that are not tested, you probably should be cleaning that cage with multiple different products. And hi, Marie. <laughs> hi, Melissa. Now we're going to actually have Kathy talk about the shirt Michael is oh, wearing. Yes. 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 with this design and they actually got it set up to where small businesses the business and with him so that purchases from the shirts they contribute to the small business so this shirt was purchased ten dollars got to go to Mike and Tegan ten goes to the supplies so it's pretty amazing I had mine on the other day so, so both supporting two small businesses it's awesome during these times so if you guys do want to support us go ahead and go to santanscreenprinting.com and you can go ahead and click us on there they have tons of cool shirts like Kathy said she had her pink one on earlier it looked very cute and then Michael has the black one on here um, we did link them in our profile, so if you guys scroll down, we'll go ahead and share it again. But it's an awesome thing. You get to support two small businesses, and you get this cool t-shirt. Yeah. Yes, good, tons of hearts. It's a good commemorative t-shirt of the times that we're in right now. Okay, yes. uh, to, now, Definitely. if you guys are looking for our name, because there's actually lots of businesses that you can support. Our name is actually at the bottom of that list. It's a, alphabetical. Think, yeah, it's alphabetical, so you got to go to the R's. Um, which is down near the bottom. So when you buy the shirt, uh, look for our name. Cause again, you get this cool, if it's $20, you get this cool shirt, different colors. This different one's colors. black. And they're really soft. They're really yes. comfortable. They're not like high on the neck. Like they're mm. very, they're good shirts. Yep. So, uh, you, you buy that shirt, uh, $10 goes to the screen printing. $10 goes to us and all the donations that we make and so far we've actually have made um 30 dollars in donations from these shirts um any donations that are made again they go back toward these animals they go to george's cage floyd's cage our tortoises and even our snakes uh that we have to do constant care for again we go through lots of cleaning supplies so buy them online it's a great way to support local businesses we've been saying shop local well here's your chance to help in supporting us as well as this awesome t-shirt company. Yeah, so we're gonna have Michael go ahead and put Poseidon away here. We'll get another good shot of him in the sunshine real quick so you guys can see the rainbow turn so he's in the sunshine. <laughs> Thank right. you. There we go. Thank you, Poseidon. So Michael's gonna put him away and he's gonna go uh, cleanse himself. Yes. And then while we wait, does anyone have any questions? Oh, Marie says hello, Kathy. Hi! <laughs> yes, Kathy is our neighbor and she's my best friend. <laughs> Kathy, how'd you meet us? Do you want to tell the Yeah, um, so Josh and I used to do bike rides through the neighborhood, and every time we'd come on this street, in the garage, we couldn't tell what they were. We could just see things in the garage. So we didn't want to be too creepy and like walk up their driveway, but we'd kind of slow down every time. <laughs> and then finally, Josh was checking the mail one night and Mike was outside, so he pulled over to ask him about what's in the garage, learned they're super into reptiles, we have a ton in common, and after that, Tegan and I started talking on Facebook because we just constantly had trouble getting together, <laughs> and yeah. then started hanging out, and it was just 
love from there. Yeah, strayed <laughs> love. Uh, Jade says hi, Kathy. Hi, My dad Jade. says hi. Hi, Dad. Hi. And we're going to go on to the next one. So Kathy's going to go inside with Michael really quick. If anyone has questions, Kathy actually has reptiles herself. She has a ball python, olive. She has a corn snake butter. She has two beautiful little tegus. So we definitely get on very well. And can we just talk about the gorgeous day today out? Everyone else enjoying this in quarantine? Everyone not from Arizona, I'm sorry if you have bad weather. <laughs> okay, so the next one that we have out, some of you guys may remember him. This is Eugene, the carpet python. And Eugene, he did unfortunately test positive for nidovirus. So we did retire him from shows. He's no longer going to shows, but we just wanted to show everyone he is actually doing very well still. Um, we did have a scare with him a couple months back. Um, we didn't think he was going to make it, but he made a huge turnaround with medical care. So that's amazing. He's actually doing very, very well. He's shedding fine. He's eating fine. Um, he's gotten brighter. Yeah, he's gotten brighter. Yeah. He's gotten a little bit fatter, so <laughs> he's honestly doing really, really great. So we're very excited about that. We, like I said, we're getting a little nervous he wasn't going to make it, but he's made a huge turnaround. He's also not showing. Um, he's not also not showing any clinical signs. So when we say clinical signs, um, yeah, we, can you explain to us what that means? Yeah. So when we say clinical signs, that means that they are actually showing the respiratory signs. So the respiratory signs that he was showing, he had tons of bubbles coming all over the place. He was rubbing his face. And with rubbing his face against the glass, we were seeing just tons of mucus all over the glass. Um, it was not looking good. Um, lately, we haven't seen any mucus on the glass. He's not rubbing as much. Now, what's also interesting is this virus, it can actually affect their mouths. So there's another bacterial infection that's called stomatitis. Stomatitis is, un um, is the fancy way of saying mouth rot. So these snakes can actually get mouth rot from the virus, and that's just because of all the mucus. Also, with all the rubbing, it causes lots of infection when they rub their heads. And the reason for rubbing their heads is because of how irritated their mouths are from all the mucus that's building up. Now, what's, in uh, what's interesting is this has also, we've seen uh, snakes with NIDO actually lose uh, all their teeth because of stomatitis. They also get these very large mouth blisters as well. Um, but uh, we were worried with that with Eugene rubbing his face everywhere because he could have easily gotten it. Um, yeah. But we haven't seen any clinical signs at all uh, since his scare. Um, he's really made a huge comeback, uh, which is which is great. Amazing, he's, actually, because yes. he's a lot yeah. smaller than Hopel, Brucinda, yes. and Leonard Arna. The bigger snakes generally have a better time of combating it, but um, he has actually made it when some of the others unfortunately didn't. So yeah. it's been really, really cool to see him turn around and acting like himself again. It took, uh, it took three weeks of intensive care. care. <laughs> um, I was working with him so much trying to get him, uh, to get back to normal. And, uh, it, it was, I, I can honestly say Beautiful with viruses, you know, I mean, we're seeing it now with everything that's happening. Um, but with viruses, uh, it, it's heartbreaking. It, it really is heartbreaking. And uh, Kathy's seen it in our faces. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, Kathy has helped us through a lot of the medical. Yeah. yeah. And anyone that's worried about Kathy's babies at home, she will not go in her reptile room. She'll no. clean herself fully. She'll clean her clothes. So don't worry. There's going to be no cross-contamination with her animals. Nope. <laughs> yeah, not at all. But yeah, she's been helping us for literally months now with everything. And Kathy's uh, boyfriend, Josh, every time I come over and I'm like, oh, I want to go see the Tegus. He's like, you didn't touch any Nino. <laughs> yeah, we're very safe about everything. Yeah, very careful. Very, very careful. <laughs> but yeah, he's doing really, really well. So I know everyone really loved him at our birthday parties. Everyone really enjoyed him around the neck. But his little brother, not genetically, but figuratively, Neville, has been filling in on our birthday parties. Is he that little anymore? He's about the size of Eugene now. <laughs> I, honestly, he might be bigger he than might Eugene be now. <laughs> yeah, Neville has been filling in for him, and he's been doing great. So there will still be carpet pythons around everyone's neck. <laughs> and not to mention, uh, you guys, uh, I did one Instagram video with it. But we have some other snakes that we're bringing in as well. We got a new boa constrictor. Um, and uh, what was that? 
what was that? Raisin. Raisin. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a false water cobra that's actually really large too. And our false water cobra has been doing really good uh, hanging out with kids um, as well. So uh, don't worry. Um, we also have ball pythons that we've been putting around next to. They've been showing some good fashion. Um, yeah. Now you're probably wondering, you know, why do we put these things on next? Well, one, it's an experience. Um, we don't suggest doing it, um, but you have professionals that are working with it. I know these snakes. Um, I also make sure that the head is nicely pointed away. As you can see with Kathy, the head's pointed toward me. And I always do that at my shows as well. Always make sure that everything is comfortable. Also, we test the snakes out uh, prior to see how they handle with that. Um, now, with uh, snakes, uh, they are a lot of snakes are arboreal species. So like this carpet python here, it's an arboreal species. That means that it lives in trees. So uh, he likes to hang out high up on your shoulders. He likes to hang out on your head. Uh, in fact, Josh actually has a picture of him going around uh, his head. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah, so, they always like Josh's hats. Yes, they love the hats. Uh, they also really like fans. Like if you have a fan going above you, they, they love the fans. But uh, they're very strong snakes. In fact, we can test the strength of this carpet. Kathy, can you just hold out your arm really quick? Just and uh, just hold on, hold on to his tail here. And I'm just gonna drop you just like this and just, just watch what he does. So they don't like to dangle too much, but look at all that body weight just going right back up to the top just like that. Look at that six pack though. Yes. Michael's so, jealous. No, lots, I'm just kidding. Right? <laughs> uh, so just lots of muscle to help them move. Uh, they're extremely strong animals. Um, now you also might notice with this python, it's thinner. Um, unlike the next python we're about to see, uh, this one's uh, very thin. The reason it's thin is because they're arboreal, so they don't really need that girth. Girthier pythons mainly hang out on the ground, while skinnier pythons like this, nice and slim, those hang up nice, nice and high in the trees. But just because he's slim doesn't mean he can't eat things way bigger than him. Uh, these guys are known to eat cockatoos out in the wild, and that's a really large bird. Very interesting. But yeah, everyone that has been wondering about our nidos, everyone that has joined us, this is one of the animals that were diagnosed with a nido. His name is Eugene. He did tons of birthday parties before. Look how gorgeous this boy is. Hi, bud. He's one of my favorite snakes, <laughs> but he's doing perfectly fine now. Again, we did have a scare with him a couple of months ago, but he's made a huge turnaround, which we're really excited for. And we will be testing them again in just a couple of months to see if everyone's still NIDO or if they're not NIDO positive. Um, so yeah, he's doing really, really good. So we're very excited about that. And we have to be very careful with our tests too, just because that they show up, like let's say we test all of them and only a couple of them show up negative. That doesn't mean that they get to go back to birthdays. Yeah. Um, the virus has to shed itself in, uh, uh, when we do the swabs. So just because they test the negative does not mean they're actually negative. It means that the virus may not have shed itself. Mm -hmm. The reason that these snakes showed back as positive, and it says it on our email uh, when we get the test back, it says that they shed a good amount of the virus to actually be picked up. Um, so that way we can tell that they're super positive. Um, so when we test them, you know, if they come back negative, that's great. They're still going to be hanging out in quarantine and then they will go through another test later on. If we can get multiple tests of them showing negative, that means that they don't really have that virus anymore. Yeah. But we're still through the first phase right now, yes. still monitoring their health. But we just, again, wanted to give you guys an update that they are still doing good, that even though they're retired, everyone still loves them and wants to see them. Yep. And so. we're going to be doing lots of videos like this. Uh, even once we do start doing birthdays in schools again, we're going to, you know, still do videos like this so you guys can still see everybody, even though you don't get to see them in person anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So Eugene is doing good. His girlfriend, Rapunzel, she is also NIDO positive, but she's also doing very well too. But she's just a little bit meaner than Eugene, so we're going to not take her out today. <laughs> yeah, Everyone Kathy at knows. home is like, Mike, take it out. Take take the mean ones yeah. out. No. No, no. <laughs> Rapunzel's maybe like almost twice his size and width and length and she's spicy. Yeah, she's got a lot of teeth, but she likes me. So, I mean, maybe low key. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to take her out. <laughs> that would be fun, right? Getting bit in front of everyone. I think we should all make Keegan take out Rapunzel. <laughs> oh, so my dad actually asked. Hi, dad. Asked, how much do the tests cost? So this Ooh, is just so you guys can know what goes into testing the animals. Um, so the tests are not cheap. Um, yeah, through fish head diagnostics, yes. um, it's actually... It's about $79 for a test. 
Yeah. Um, However, if you buy a lot of them like we had to, yes. you do get a bit of a discount. So right. for 28 snakes, we spent about $1,500. But yeah. here's the thing. Even though $79 seems like a lot, there are companies that will advertise those types of tests for $20 to $30, and they are not reputable. Fish Head Diagnostics is super reputable. So what you're paying for is you're not just paying for the test, you're paying for quality and you're also paying for the research behind it too. Yeah. Um, so that's why we wanted to go through it. Now we had to test, you know, 26 snakes. Uh, so we ended up doing, uh, getting a discount. Um, but again, the tests do cost about $79. However, if you buy multiple tests uh, to test all of your snakes, you do get a very significant discount. And again, the testing process is so simple. It yeah. was easy. I'd go through that. It took I'm, four of us, yeah. Yeah. but it was simple. There's easy. a YouTube video on it. <laughs> no, but you guys also have to think about the investment too. You're paying yeah. for an animal. You want to make sure it's healthy. Even if it's not a healthy animal, is it something that, you know, if you wanted to keep it as a pet, are you able to keep up with the medical bills? Mm -hmm. Obviously, with what we do with Radical Reptile Fund, we definitely need healthy animals. So if you're willing to invest $100, $1,000, $2,000 in the animal, a test that's only, you know, $80, that's really nothing in the long run. So you definitely want to make sure that the animal's healthy before you go ahead and you know, obviously put it into a collection that's, you know, thousands of dollars, um, you know, in our reptile room. So definitely worth it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if your snake ever shows respiratory signs, or if you ever have to go to the vet for respiratory reasons, always opt into that test, always opt into it because you might be giving it this medicine and we were giving them respiratory. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately with what happened with pancake. Yeah. So we thought with, it was bacterial at first and, uh, yeah, it with, was not. Exactly. So with pancake and everybody like you need to make sure that you are testing for it yeah and it's something that we know about it's something that again it's still a very new virus going on in the reptile world for everyone that's joining us now so something that we've learned about we're trying to shed as much light on it as possible just because it is very not known a lot of people think these things are bacterial but it's actually viral it can be very dangerous if your snake has underlying symptoms if your snake is a little bit older um, again, with what happened to Pancake, our woman python, he was an older python, so he unfortunately did not survive, but it can definitely happen. So we want to shed as much light as possible, but as you guys can see, even if they're positive, they can make a turnaround and they can be perfectly fine as and the virus Kathy's is handling also, right now. <laughs> the virus is also super contagious too. So um, out of all of our snakes, uh, we tested 26 snakes, and this is not counting Pancake or uh, Waffles that were already in it. Um, out of the 26, 10 came back positive. So that's a huge number. Yep. But if you are sterile and you wash your hands, yes. everything's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Michael and Kathy are going to put Eugene away. They're going to go ahead and clean themselves up. And we will get back our beautiful baby that everyone wants to see. Everyone has been wanting to see Hopal. You can kind of see her back there. She's a big yellow bob excited to come out. Everyone wants her out. Everyone's been wondering how she's doing. She's doing uh, pretty relatively okay, so we'll have her come out here in a second. But while they clean themselves up, I'll, you know, kind of just hang out, try to find Turtle. Where are you at, Turtle? There he is. Hi, Quasi. And if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer them now. Hey, George. How you doing, dude? Oh, he's not having a good time today. Right, you're not the star of the show, you're upset. Hey, Floyd. So Floyd did a lovely thing the other day. I actually came out here and I was gonna turn off her lights and uh, I was standing right about here and she jumped all the way from her platform all the way to this wall. So that was a very exciting time. She was like Spider-Man. She wasn't hurt or anything, but it is definitely very exciting to uh, have a lizard jump completely straight at you. Oh no, are we not gonna focus? All right, sorry guys, it's not focusing on her. There we go. So, we've got Floyd. Hey, Georgita. As you can see, George is feeling feisty and like himself again. And I'm the one George actually likes, so. Yeah. Any other questions, feel free to ask, guys. Turtle go. Where's the turtle? He's hiding under the thing. Okay, 
Yeah, everyone has been asking about Hopeful. Um, we did announce that, unfortunately, Brucenda and Leonard did pass away, which was unfortunate, but Hopeful is still going strong. She's feeling better than ever, and you guys are going to get to see her. How old is Hopeful? Uh, when we got Hopeful, she was about three years old. We've had her, how long have we had Miss Hopeful? Uh, about at least six years. Six years, yeah, so six plus three. She's around nine years old. Oh, here we go, Miss Hopel. Oh, and I don't know why my camera's gone like black and white. <laughs> so Hopel, she is around uh, nine years old now. And can you guys bring her back a little over here? <laughs> I need to be connected. There we go. So Hopel, she's nine years old. We got her when she was three. We've had her for about six years. She's about probably 14 and a half, 15 foot long now. Very big girl. There we go. She is albino, so that's why she's not showing up very well. And everyone loves Miss Hopeful. She's the star of our show. She was in a Super Bowl commercial with Alice Cooper. Hi, Hopeful. Everyone's missed her tremendously. What you doing, girl? Hi, how you doing? You guys want to see something really cool with Hopeful. Watch this. Sorry, the lighting uh, is kind of <laughs> drawing her out now. There we go. Thank you, Kathy. So, Hopeful actually sheds her skin. So, this is a Hopeful skin. Uh, I have it wound up here, but let's. Here, oh, how about here. you? I hold one side or not. Okay. Okay. So this is just, I mean, we can't really see because of the lighting guys, sorry. The sun's coming too much now. Yeah, it's a little too much. There we go. It's you still... You see the shed stretches almost the length of the driveway. Yeah. But she don't sheds... Take, don't take the snake skin as a way to tell their size. The reason you don't want to do that is because when they shed their skin, their skin actually stretches. So it's not their actual size. It can add easily another three feet onto... What if not is. more so actually that's a good point you bring when people used to actually go out on explorations uh to try to find the longest snake in the world they would actually find snake skins and they'd be like oh i found the longest snake in the world it's this huge snake but like michael said their snake skin when they shed actually stretches and if they shed in water it'll stretch a lot more um so what their snake shed is is going to make them look a lot more impressive than what they I mean, they're still impressive animals, but more impressive than what they actually are in person, so. That's why a lot of people have thought, you know, some of these snakes can get 30 Thanks, plus Kathy. feet is because they would get, you know, you'd find you a reticulated so python that might be 20, 22 feet, uh, but it would create a shed that would be about 30 feet. And you're thinking, oh, well, it's it's 30 feet. This, uh, Here, stand kind of to block yeah, her. Sun. Yeah, there, there we go. No, stand in the sunlight, Michael. Oh, sorry. There we go. <laughs> now yeah. we can actually see her. Perfect. There she is. Hi, Hopeful. She's How beautiful. you doing? Can you tell she's my favorite? Yeah. Kathy was Hopeful's nurse when we were having to do very intensive medical care. Mm -hmm. uh, me, Kathy, Josh, every single night, different medical care. So, um, yeah, she was going through it. Hopeful's actually, since we've had her for the last six years, has always had issues with respiratory. Um, again, we've been working with the vet with her pretty much, what, every six months for the last six years. Um, always thought it was something bacterial. And then when we actually went through and did all the NIDO testing, found out she was NIDO positive. So we don't know if she's always had it. Um, a lot of big snakes actually do have respiratory issues because of how large they are. Um, and they don't get a lot of, I mean, Hopeful gets quite a bit of exercise going to different shows and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, a lot of big snakes do have respiratory issues just due to their size and uh, their lungs, basically. So, she did test positive. Hi, sweetness. But she's still doing good. She's still hanging out. She is now retired, but she's probably loving that, aren't you, sweetness? Loving that quite a bit more. <laughs> she gets to just hang out all day. She doesn't have to worry about kids being like, oh, my God, let me touch her. But Loki, I think she loved that. So <laughs> now, Hopeful um, with the virus, she's in a different stage. So the two snakes that you saw, you know, 
Eugene showed clinical signs for a little while, not showing them anymore. Uh, the water python has shown absolutely no clinical signs. Opal does have clinical signs. So if you guys notice, um, you know, oh, you wanna go, sorry, my bad. Um, so with, uh, she does have clinical signs. So her clinical signs are mucus coming off of the nose, slight nose rubbing. She also does have some open mouth breathing as well. Um, now she's had these symptoms, like Tegan said, for years. Um, so, and you know, we're not seeing any lack of, lack of weight. She's actually a monster eater. So one way that you can tell snakes are, are not feeling good is when they stop eating. When a snake stops eating, that's a problem. Many snakes, they'll eat, they're like garbage disposals. They'll eat things that they probably shouldn't eat. There's videos online of a snake eating a porcupine. So, uh, when a snake is not eating, we got to pause. Your mom says hi. Oh, hi, mom. Mm -hmm. All right, um, continue. <laughs> so when a snake is not eating, uh, that's that's definitely a, a huge problem. Hopal here, eating just fine. In fact, after this video tonight, she's a, she's going to be eating uh, eating a rabbit tonight. Not a live one, um, but she will be eating a nice hefty rabbit tonight uh, after, after the video. No, we're not going to show that online. Uh, too many kids, and uh, I don't want, I don't want that. Um, so Rebecca asked what type of snake is she? Is she a Burmese or a boa? Oh, she's a Burmese python. So she's an albino Burmese python. Now there's a huge difference between boas and pythons. Uh, one, boas are what we call a new world snake. However, there are some old world boas. New world and old world. Let me tell you a little about that. So new world is North and South America, while old world is Europe, Australia, Africa, and Asia. Now pythons are mainly old world snakes. Um, uh, and what's another big difference between pythons and boas? Um, well, that was what I was trying to get to as well. So the other huge difference that's between them is Hopal here, if she um, if she is pregnant, she's actually going to lay eggs, okay? Um, but boas, they are live birth. So boa constrictors and anacondas, which is a type of boa, they actually have birth live. Um, but pythons here lay eggs. Yeah, huh, Hopal. Another interesting fact about live birth too, uh, rattlesnakes. So we have rattlesnakes here in Arizona. Rattlesnakes have live birth as well. In fact, all viper species have live birth. In fact, keep an eye out on our Facebook because we're going to be posting something that uh, Josh sent us yes. about rattlesnakes soon. So keep an eye out. Yep. And Michael was mentioning feeding. We do have an idea in the works regarding shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michael, do you want to tell people what we may or may not be doing? Oh, there you go. There's a part of the Nido virus. She sneezes quite a bit. So bless you, Hopal. All over me. Do you all want right. to put her up here and we can go over in the shade? Yeah. Yeah, that might be yeah. good. And Proper then yeah, we can here, give her I'll, a nice... I'll uh, grab her head because I got snot all over my arm now. There we go. So let's go in the shade. Uh, maybe more... I don't know how well... Do we actually want to go in the garage because I uh, might lose in internet a connection? Bit dirty. Maybe let's cut out here. Okay, well, again, I might lose internet connection. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, where to go? Where to go? Garage. Guys, we apologize. Our garage is dirty. We have a lot of animals. We clean them quite a bit, so. Sorry. I, There's I some peat moss. All right, so let's back up slightly more. There we go. All right, so what we were saying is, uh, <laughs> someone said, bless you, Hopal. Yes, bless you. Um, so we do have an idea regarding... Let me actually come over here so the turtle is in here. There we go. We don't see much of the garage. Happy, Michael? Yeah. All right. So, oh, dear. <laughs> All right. Let me, guys. <laughs> there we go. We're good. Taking this is a bad idea. There we go. Look, we got a shock back in here. We got... Oh, we got a lot of stuff going on, guys. Here we go. So, uh, okay. we are going to... Uh, potentially. Potentially. We're still working out some kinks. Uh, we are going to start doing virtual um, shows. So you can actually pay a discounted rate. Um, it's a heavy discounted rate. Uh, and we actually have Zoom. You'll be giving, uh, you'll be able to actually book a virtual show or bir virtual uh, birthday party. And uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll what Michael is saying, we are planning on doing virtual birthday parties or school shows. What we will be doing is five animals where we will do the same thing. You'll get to see them via Zoom. <laughs> Here's some interesting educational facts about them. 
but we are thinking about offering seeing a feeding either to a snake, a lizard, or a tortoise, if that's something you guys would like to do. If you book beforehand, we will be mailing out a snake skin, a sticker, and then a postcard as well, so you will have that before your show. And we are thinking about making a virtual activity book, so if we make it a PDF, we will send it to you beforehand, and then you guys will get to follow along and do any cool activities that way. So we're still working it out right now, uh, but that is what we are planning. So keep an eye on that for anyone that unfortunately had to cancel birthday parties coming up. I know there's been quite a few in April and May. We're so sorry that we've had to do that. Uh, you know, definitely trying to follow CDC regulations, but we are trying to make it possible to where you guys can still share and have a lot of fun with the reptiles as well. And then, side note, someone just asked, how old is Hopal? Sorry if you had said that earlier. No worries, 15, people keep joining. Nine years old now? Yeah, so when we first got her, she was about three, three and a half years old. Um, now, Hopal, just so you guys know, she was unfortunately power-fed. It's something that we do not practice in. And that's when you feed an animal very quickly so they get big fast so you can breed them at a young age. So she was power fed when she was younger um, so she would get large so she could breed. But um, we got her when she was three years old. Um, <laughs> as you can see, she's very interested in the ceiling right now. Um, and we've had her for about six years. So she's around nine years old now. Uh, look, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But she's a very big girl for nine years, huh, Hopeful? Are you looking at the garage? What are you doing? There we Tondo. go. And uh, Floyd right here pretending like she's going to eat a 14-foot snake. Hopefully yeah. yeah. So <laughs> uh, Rebecca says, yes, yeah, she had a Burmese python that was parafed. Yeah, a lot of people, um, sometimes they ask us when we bring snakes to show, oh, why is your snake so small? Um, a lot of our snakes, we take them routinely to the vet. <laughs> they go quite frequently. Kathy knows she helps bring the animals there too with us. Yep. Um, but we make sure everyone is, you know, definitely they're not overweight. They're not underweight. They're very well taken care of. But it's very common in the pet trade. You'll see it on, unfortunately, a lot of YouTube videos. Oh, um, quite a few a lot, different uh, zoos. A lot of animals are overfed to where they're obese, but then people think that that is a normal thing. You'll see it in big cats like tigers yeah. too. That's the hot topic right now. <laughs> um, but a lot of animals are obese. So we do keep ours healthy. We give them quite a bit of exercise. We try to give them enrichment when we can. Yep. So these guys try to keep them as healthy as possible. But people always ask, why are they so small? They're not supposed to be giants. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> Um, in fact, I actually had this guide that was posted out the other day. I, I'll try to find it. It was on my Facebook, and I, I forgot to save it. But it actually shows what a snake is supposed to look like mm -hmm. versus, and it looks a lot thinner. Um, but that's what vets recommend. They they shouldn't be these yeah. girthier sizes. You snakes, guys can see Hopal's muscles right here. Yeah, snakes. All on her back. Inside. They're lucky if they get a meal every six months out in the wild. But imagine that you're, uh, imagine you're feeding, you know, a 10 pound rabbit to a snake that's like 12 feet every two weeks. Yeah. That's a lot of food that that snake is getting. Um, and you know, we hear it, I, I've heard it so many times where some people will come up and be like, oh, what are you feeding, you know, Eugene, a snake the size of Eugene? I'm like, oh, you know, just a large rat every, you know, uh, three, three weeks. Two snake. to three weeks. Yeah, two to three weeks. And uh, they're going, oh, I feed mine rabbits that size every or couple once weeks. every week. Yeah. Um, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, no, that's that's not okay. Yeah. Um, so, again, our snakes are a healthy size. Uh, you know, we take our snakes to the vet. We get our vet checked up. And our vets are actually rather impressed with how well our animals are taken care of. So, um, and I, I know that <laughs> some of them are probably even watching this video now. Uh, so again, we, we do a lot with our animals. Yeah. Make sure they're healthy and healthy, happy and healthy. It definitely, uh, does happen. They do get quite obese in captivity, which is unfortunate, but yeah, your snakes should not be giant and massive and have a huge belly on them. Mm -hmm. They should be able to see the muscle tone like Hopal here. She's a beautiful example of a Burmese python, huh? She did. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And even through all her night, I'd have to say she's... A healthy snake. Yes. Yeah. She goes through her, her tough times, but. Yep. And we get her through all of our tough times. Yeah. Kathy helps. Uh, Tegan and I. And Kathy's and, her registered yeah, vet yeah. or nurse. Nurse. Um, 
But yeah, uh, you know, we get her through her tough times. We make sure she's feeling nice and comfortable. So yeah. she's probably liking it right now. In fact, after this video, we're going to be soaking her too. So. Yeah, soaking her and then she gets a nice rabbit afterwards, mm -hmm. hummus. All soaking actually it. helps with uh, clearing out like snot and stuff like that. Uh, it actually gets kind of lubrication and it gets, uh, cleans out the body a lot. So soaking a snake when it's sick like that is actually really good for them. You can pat them like a baby too. Yes. Hang them over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. We've done that many a time. We've had a train. Pat them like a baby and then that helps her sneeze out the yuckies. Because a snake's lung is actually quite, it's about a third of their first part of their body. Yes. So they have one really, really large lung. So you generally want to, when they're this large, we have a pony wall inside or like Kathy said, we'll actually make a train of people where we have her over our shoulders. We'll give her a nice pat so if she does have any mucus, she can actually sneeze it up, cough it up. <laughs> or again, if she's over our pony wall inside, we'll just give her a nice pat and then that'll make her feel quite a bit better. And then Rebecca also asked, do you have any of your reptiles that only eat live? So we did have for a while Monty, our green feel? tree python. Um, he was unfortunately wild caught, but he did eat live for a little bit. However, we have recently got him over to frozen thawed. So right now we no longer have any animals that eat live. We try to not have any animals that eat live whatsoever. Um, it can actually hurt them. Um, our new Burmese python, Asiago, he's actually inside. We did a video with him a couple weeks ago, but he has quite a few scars on him because the previous owner would feed him live. Um, they can actually get quite damaged, get a few scars <laughs> on them when they do eat live. So we don't feed live. Um, we definitely try to prevent it if we can. Kathy here is getting a workout holding all of Hopal right now. <laughs> I just, so. I keep losing more and more of Opal's head. I look yeah. over at Kathy and I'm like, yeah. Kathy, do you want to do a squat or two for us? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there you go. She doesn't need to go to the gym for a while. <laughs> Gyms are closed. Just come here. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but yeah, so we do not feed, feed live, basically. Um, yeah. I mean, the only thing live that we feed right now are crickets and cockroaches, but that we can't really kind of prevent, so. Yeah. And uh, one thing that we don't do, so there's, al there's always this thing should you feed snakes in a separate enclosure and there's a huge back and forth with that and i do not feed my snakes in separate enclosures couple reasons behind that one reason is if i put a snake in a tub and i feed it in the tub it now thinks that every time it goes into a tub it's going to be fed well what do we put them in when we bring them to shows we put bring them in tubs so that means that every time if this snake was eating in tubs uh every time uh, we would take them to a show, they would be thinking that they're getting fed. Um, also, feeding them inside their enclosure gets them on what we call food aggressive um, with their cage. And I appreciate food aggression, <laughs> just like Floyd there. The yeah, I, very food aggressive. <laughs> the reason that I appreciate food aggression is because that means that they don't really need a whole lot of movement. Yeah. Uh, so they don't need that live. They can e they easily think that, hey, something that's coming into my enclosure is going to be food. She's on me. Yeah, she's going to ready for it. However, there are certain ways to make sure that the snake doesn't think, you know, you're going to be that food or anything like that. And it's actually called tap training. That's basically where you pet the snake first. So before I got Hopal out, I pet Hopal with a snake hook. And I said, hey, listen, I'm going to be touching yeah. you. We generally give her two or three taps, letting her know, hey, sorry, Kathy. <laughs> We're going to be getting you out. We're not going to be feeding you. Yeah. So, But like Michael was saying, it really depends on a preference thing. Everything with animal keeping is sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes it's in between. If you want to feed your snake in a separate tub, you definitely can. However, since we do a lot of educational shows and we use tubs for traveling purposes, we do not do that. So they do not associate the tubs with food. Yep. Um, that's just our preference. Again, when we're in the cage handling them, we do do a lot of training. So there's different techniques that we use to when yes. they know they're getting fed and when they're not getting fed. Yep. The we're kind of the same way at our house too yeah. yeah we don't feed them separate um we did for a little bit because both of ours were rescues and it took butters he's our corn snake a little bit of time to kind of figure out that he was safe eating um now he's a champ but we did start off feeding in a separate tub because that was the only way he'd eat so yeah. you have to do like what works for you and what you know but eventually train them to where you want to be with them exactly and like what kathy said we've had so many different rescues that have come from so many different backgrounds yeah. that 
I mean, it can take months, if not years, to get them to where you want them. So it's yeah. just the patience. I mean, we've had animals that, again, will only eat live that we have to transition. We've had animals that yeah. do eat in tubs or only eat in paper bags or only eat white mice. Yeah. <laughs> we've had lots of different things. So it does take a while. But as Kathy just said it so eloquently, sometimes <laughs> it just takes a little bit of time to yeah. move it yeah. along. Like Tegan said, eventually you get them to exactly where you want them and... That's when you can kind of put your uh, pat on your back and be like, hey, you know what? I've got I've got this snake in my collection. It's doing great. Yep. yep. And I mean, like, I feel like we need to do a live at Kathy's house to go see her tegus. Right. They see are she and most, Bowser. Yeah. Everybody always okay. asks us, why don't we have tegus in shows? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of them, but Kathy and Josh have the two most beautiful tegus. <laughs> so we definitely have to go check out. Uh, and they have the coolest reptile room, in my opinion, yeah. even better than ours. <laughs> Gotta get it cleaned up. And then we'll be, we'll be <laughs> yeah, there. and then you can see Butters and all of their beautiful little snakes, too. Yep. I want to babysit them again because of how cute they were. But, oh, the Hopeful Hi. just gave you a look on the head. Thank you. Uh, so you before... <laughs> right. Uh, so we will go ahead and just give a quick shout out again to Santan Screen Printing. If you guys see Michael's t-shirt back here. Uh, AZ Strong. This is basically a t-shirt that Santan Screen Printing is going to be making. It helps support them. It helps support small businesses. So if you guys go on to their link, we have it on our Facebook page. We will share it again. You can actually go on, select our business. $10 go to us. $10 go to Santan Screen Printing and you're supporting two local businesses. It helps us during these hard times and we really appreciate it. And you get a cool commemorative t-shirt regarding this pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, some Rebecca says, I have been to her house and I haven't seen them, sad face. That's right. Oh. What were we thinking? What were I we know. Thinking, Kathy, I don't even know. Oh, Hope was all about your hair right now. <laughs> and if you can tell, your snake's never going to just sit nicely no matter what you want. Nope. Yeah, she's... She's going to move in all the ways she wants to. Yes, yes she is. Do you guys want to go ahead and put her away and then uh, we'll um, we'll close it out? Or? Yeah. We're, we're going to soak her, so do you, do you want to show me how, show them how we're going to soak her really quick? Yeah, how are we going to do that, Michael? Where's the tub? Uh, oh, there, you already here. moved it. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, let's go ahead and move. <laughs> Kathy, I'm going to give you all of Popol. Is that cool? Yep. All right, I all can, right, cool. Yeah, yeah, all right. So we have Kathy here holding all of Popol. She's a strong woman. She can lift over 80 pounds in one snake while it's moving on her shoulders. So here's the tub that Hopal likes to soak in. Woo, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, she's all about your hair. <laughs> As you can see, it's very difficult for one person to hold a big snake. There we go. Generally, uh, we would definitely have two people. I mean, Michael's not far away, as you can see, but we always have at least two to three people handling our big snakes at a time. She's very focused on the garage right now. Uh, Rebecca says they were sleeping. Oh, they were probably burmating. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why. Yeah, if an animal's burmating, it's similar to hibernating, so you don't want to annoy it at that time. So, understandable if that happens. Do you need help unwinding? Okay. I got ahead. So I got the tail. Okay. Here you go. Be careful with your shoulders and your neck. Okay. Oh, a nice shower, Hopi. There we go, big girl. Hey, miss. Um, please stop escaping. We're trying to give you a nice soak, ma'am. You're on live TV. He's like, but dad, I don't want to. Right? I don't want to. She fights just like your kids do. So Rebecca, Hopal is actually our largest snake right now. Um, depending on when she eats, she is anywhere between 80 to 90 pounds. It depends on her rabbit that she eats. So she's almost 100 pounds. Uh, last time we measured her, which was like almost two years ago, she was 14 feet. So she's probably closer to 15 feet now. But she's a very large snake. And second to her is our other albino Burmese python, Asiago. He's actually indoors. He's about 11 feet long. Um, he doesn't weigh nearly as much as her because he's a male, so he's quite a bit thinner. And then our largest lizard, we'll just show him again because he's the cutest little patoot ever, George. 
He's our largest lizard. He is a five foot Argus monitor. Actually, he's, I mean, you can't really tell now because his tail is curled around him, but that's including his tail. He's about five feet long. He's very big. I mean, let me back up so you guys can make oh. Kathy crouch next to him. So here's Kathy next to George. Kathy, how tall are you? Five two. Five two. You can see how big he is compared to her. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Yeah. He's my buddy. I've taken him to the vet. Yep, you help with his out. medicine yep. every single night. <laughs> huh, Georgie? You love Kathy, huh? He's overcome a lot, too. Yeah. You want to tell the background? He's in a car accident. Yeah. And it totaled Mike's car, and he was in the car, so you can only imagine what it did to him in his little tub. Yeah. So that's why he's got this sweet setup now on the ground. He's not allowed to climb. He's got to stay low, but he healed, and he recovered really, really well. He's a rock star. <laughs> Michael, you're losing a snake there. Yeah, like Kathy said, we did do a, actually a live with uh, George and then Floyd, the Argus monitor above him. He's She's in there. But we did a live regarding that and his background too. But like she said, he was in a car accident, um, unfortunately, when we when Michael was going to a show. But he's healed almost completely now. Um, he's very, very good. But he's also retired due to that car accident. We don't want to disturb his vertebrae any more than it already has been. So now he's got this cool bachelor pad to hang out in and just chill for the uh, rest of his life. And then occasionally he goes to Petsmart and occasionally he goes down to the park. Um, but other than that, he just likes to hang out here and inside sometimes too. Huh, Floyd? Floyd doesn't really uh, get to do that because... Floyd's so handsome. Oh, look, she's going to come and get me now. Hi, Floyd. We would say she's beautiful. Michael thinks it's a boy. I think she's a girl because of how little she is. But, Kathy, what do you think? I always thought it was a boy. And that was just because of things I've heard. So I have a really hard time now trying to say that it's a girl. I don't know. It's tough. Floyd, I think you're a girl gang, huh? What do you guys think? Boy or girl? There are, I will say, before anyone starts to guess, there are two different uh, hybrids of Argus monitors. There's a New Guinea, which is generally quite a bit smaller. And then there's the Australian, which is quite a bit bigger than the New Guinea subspecies. However, males generally tend to have those really big, meaty front arms like George has. And if we look, Floyd, I'm not trying to diss your biceps, bro, but if we look at Floyd, <laughs> Those biceps aren't that big. So I think Floyd is a girl. <laughs> Rebecca said lizard is my guess. Honestly, lizard. <laughs> lizard. Rebecca, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, do you guys think Floyd's a girl or a boy? We can uh, take her to the vet and then we'll get DNA done and see what it's up. You know, after the pandemic and once we have money again. <laughs> All right. Alrighty. Do you guys want to answer any question? Do a sum up? Yeah, what do we want to so do? Any questions that you guys have? Uh, feel free to put them in the comments now. Um, My dad says Floyd's a girl, so that's two to two right now. Someone else <laughs> vote with us. I mean, I can see the female features. I get it. I, I haven't it. lifted up the tail yet, so I'm too nervous. Rebecca <laughs> says girl too. All right. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> Rebecca says out. she wins. I'll find out. Yeah. Um, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, if you uh, please follow us on YouTube, this video will also get posted to YouTube after. Uh, we have lots of YouTube videos. Um, go check them out, including our Komodo Dragon video. Uh, you can see all our frog setup too. Yeah, um, our Komodo Dragon video, our frog setup video. Those are all there. Plus all the other lives. We just posted the live that we did at uh, Red Mountain Conservation Center. Uh, if you can, follow the Red Mountain Conservation Center on Instagram because they just got new babies <coughs> in, and we're gonna go see them tomorrow. We won't be doing a video for it, but we do get to go see them. Uh, I'm not happy about this. Yeah, I don't get to go because I have to go to work. Yeah, so uh, go on their Instagram, Red Mountain Conservation Center. It is so cute. The babies are adorable. They will be. There will be yeah. pictures posted there at some point. Uh, and, uh, and we'll probably do another live in like two or three weeks once the babies are big enough to actually see a live. There you have baby porcupines. They have a baby four four horned sheep or Jacob's four horned sheep. Yep. They have baby red river hogs. Yep. Um, who knows? Maybe there'll be a baby warthog. We didn't know if she was pregnant or not, but yeah. So go follow them. Um, and then again, shop local. Shop at all the pet stores that are local. Um, and then make sure that if you want to support us and this awesome T-shirt business. Please 
please go online, buy one of these cool t-shirts. It's $20. That is a steal for a t-shirt. Yeah. $10 goes to Radical Reptile Fund. As long as you select this, remember it's alphabetical. We are down near the bottom. And $10 goes toward this screen print, uh, printing business. So go out and buy one of these shirts. And if you can, if you have reptiles at home, we want to see you holding your reptile with one of these shirts on. And yeah. tag us on Instagram. Yeah, tag us on Instagram. We will share your post. Um, and we might even share it on Facebook too. So go out, support local. <clears throat> I do just have to say that uh, my mom also says a girl. So girl is winning for Floyd right now. All right. All uh, right. Rebecca asked, do you do adult birthday parties? Yes, we do. Um, in fact, those can get a little crazy sometimes. Depending on who's drinking or not. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, we've done it before. We've done weddings. We've done commercials. We've done literally anything you can think you can have a reptile for. We've Choir done it. Quiet. Kathy helped us with that. Like Choir, 600 yeah. people on a stage. Yeah. That was very exciting. Mm -hmm. I've done uh, uh, music videos with them. We've done quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, Debbie says, you guys are great. Love these live feeds. Thank you so much, Debbie. We appreciate it. Um, and I don't see anything else coming in right now, but yeah, guys, remember, go check out our Instagram. It's at Radical Reptile Fun. We have Twitter at RRF Arizona. We have YouTube at Radical Reptile Fun. We have Facebook. Like us, subscribe, follow, all the good things. I can't think of any other social media thing that we have. Oh, we have TikTok, too. We've posted one video, but that's about it. I'm not a big fan of TikTok, so I'm sorry. You I weren't a big fan no. of Pokemon fan. Go. You weren't a fan so of Instagram, girl. and now look. I know. Yeah, yeah he, he hops on the train like three <laughs> years late, but I, he's there. I'm he not a there. very tech person, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we want to say thank you, beautiful Kathy, for joining us yes! today. Let's give her all the Kathy. hearts, hearts all hearts, the hearts. hearts. <laughs> Kathy yes. gets annoyed when she does live videos and all I do is hit hearts. <laughs> hey, I mean, she deserves all the hearts, all the likes. Thank you so much, Kathy, for joining us and helping us. Anytime. Yeah. Um, I mean, go follow Kathy's Can't Stop, Won't Stop Eating blog. She, hey, If you guys are big you. foodies, that is the Instagram to follow. She is amazing. I keep telling her she needs to make a YouTube channel. Oh, my gosh, look at all these hearts that you're getting. This oh, is geez. ridiculous. <laughs> hey, but, yes, follow go follow her. her. Instagram um, for a Can't Stop, Won't Stop Eating, you can see me trying a chicken foot. Yes, and it was did this, it. I, I did it. And it he's was, the pickiest eater alive. Yeah, so it, it's on her Instagram, so go check it out. <laughs> you can see the balut they tried and got food poisoning from. I did not try that. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, go follow them. My mom says that she loves your food pictures. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go follow her. Can't stop, won't stop eating on Instagram. Everyone tell her to make a YouTube channel because she has some bomb recipes too. All right, guys. All right, so thank you guys. We love you guys. Yep. We will see you later. Remember, t-shirts, Instagram, YouTube. Everyone say bye to George. Bye, Woo! George. Thank you, guys. We love you, and bye. Bye.